Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to beautiful South Bank here in Brisbane. I run photography workshops here in Brisbane for BNE Lens and by far the most popular workshop is the one on mobile phone photography. So I figured today I'd give you a few tips on taking better photos with your mobile phone because after all, the mobile phone is the camera that we usually have with us no matter what. Okay, so let's start by looking at how to get the best possible image quality from your mobile phone. Step one, it's a really simple one, but it's one we never think of, and that is clean the lens. Well, duh. Give it a bit of a wipe before you start taking photos, preferably with one of those micro fiber cloths that you get with glasses so that it doesn't scratch the lens. Because often you'll have fingerprints or dust or little things that are going to take away from the quality of your images from being in your pocket. So that's step one. Also, when I see people taking photos with their mobile phone, I usually see them doing this. Or this. That's problematic because in order to get really clear shots, you want your phone to be as stable as possible. So when you're holding it with one hand, it's kind of gonna be moving around a lot like that. So it's best to hold it with two hands and then brace your arms so that it's not moving around and you won't get motion blur. You'll have really sharp images. But then comes the question, well, how do I actually press the shutter button? Am I gonna use my thumb here? Well, there's a better way. What a lot of people don't realize is that your volume keys on the side of your phone are actually going to act as the shutter. Oh my God. So instead of pressing the shutter button on the screen, you should be using the volume button. So you're holding it with two hands, use the volume button to actually take the photo. But at the end of the day, this is a game of focus. The next one's a really important one, and that is that you need to focus. A lot of people just point the camera and press the shutter, and that's it. But what you need to do is actually select your subject because the camera is not actually necessarily going to focus in the right place. So why is focusing so important? Uh, I don't know. Well, there's actually two reasons. The first is obviously to have your subject clear and in focus. But the other reason is because mobile phone cameras actually use the focal point to determine the metering. That is how bright or dark it's going to actually make the image. So let's just say I want to take a picture of this leaf, for example. So if I just point the camera at it and press the shutter, You'll notice when you look at the picture, two things. The first is that the leaf actually isn't in focus. So without actually selecting the focal point, it's just not going to be sharp. But the other problem you can see here is that there's parts on the leaf that are way too bright. And that's because the, the phone didn't know that it needed to make that area of the photo well exposed. It tried to just take the whole average of the photo. So let's try that again, but this time let's focus on the leaf. Focus. How do I do that? How do I focus on the leaf anyway? Well, it's really, really easy. All you gotta do is just touch the screen where you want it to focus. And you'll see right away that that darkens down the image. Now, the camera that I'm filming this with in the background is obviously now in complete darkness. But the fact is, that's not my subject. My subject is the leaf. I need to decide what I want to be well exposed in the photo. So when I focus on the leaf and take the photo, now looking at it, you'll see the leaf is beautifully crisp and in focus and it's well exposed, it's not too bright. So taking a look at that and then looking at the other one, wow, what a difference. So that's a really important tip make sure you select your focusing point, especially in scenes like this where you've got some really bright and dark parts of the photo. And just to make it extra clear, here's the two photos side by side. Okay, so you can see how selecting that focus point doesn't just make the picture sharp in the right places, but it also helps with the exposure. But the question is, what if I want to change the exposure of the whole picture? because often you're going to want to do that because when a mobile phone sees the scene, it doesn't know what you're photographing. It doesn't know what the scene is. It just measures different levels of brightness and just tries to work it out based on that. So if it sees a scene like this, 
This wood is really dark and there's not really a lot of bright colors in the scene. So the camera is going to actually think, hey, that's too dark and it needs to brighten it up a, a little bit. So what you need to do is actually tell the camera, no, 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 no. I want to make that a little bit darker because that's actually what the scene looks like. And sometimes you might just want to make it darker to make it look better. You might think that darker looks better or brighter looks better. It's all about the creative decisions that you're making because after all, you're the photographer. So if I'm going to take a picture of this, I actually probably want it to be darker than what the camera is going to give me. So how do I do that? Well, let's first see what the camera is going to give us if we don't adjust the exposure at all. So I just compose my scene, focus, so I'm using two hands of course for stability, focus, use the volume key to take the picture, and there we have it. So what does that look like? Let's have a look. Eh, it's okay, it's not a horrible picture, but I know that it could be better. So. I'm going to actually bring the exposure down because if you have a look at the trees where the trees are in that reflection in the window they're a little bit washed out looking and the wood is actually brighter than it really looks here so I'm going to go back to the camera and this time I'm going to adjust the exposure so how do I do that well compose the scene like I did before focus now you see when I focus there's this little light globe with plus and minus next to it. That's where we can adjust the exposure. On an iPhone, it's going to be a little sun. So on different phones, the icon will be different. Could be a light globe, could be a sun, but the principle is the same and it works the same way. What you can do is simply drag up or down on that sun or light globe and it's going to make the image brighter or darker. So I compose, press, and then I drag, I want to make it darker, so I'm going to drag down. I could drag up, make it brighter, but I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So probably about there, shutter, and let's see what the result is. For me, that is much, much better. If we compare it with the other, this is the before, this is with the camera making the decisions, and this is with us making the decisions. Camera, us. Now, you might like this one more. You might say, well, I can see more of the details of the wood uh, because it's brighter. But, you know, that's okay. You're allowed to have bad taste. Uh, but this is actually, for me, a stronger image because the reflection is a little bit punchier and the wood is still looking more authentic to what it actually looks like here. Now, sometimes you're actually going to want to take a moving subject you know, maybe like some of those jump photos where people are jumping into the air, or maybe you're taking sports photos with your phone, things like that. It's really hard to actually capture the perfect moment, that decisive moment that captures exactly the moment that you want. I said moment a lot. Anyway, so how do you do that? Actually, one really great thing about mobile phones is that when you press the shutter, if you hold it down, it's actually going to take a bunch of photos in rapid fire. So that's what we call burst mode. So there's a guy back here who's uh, doing stuff with his skateboard. So I'm gonna ask if I can actually take some photos of him with my mobile phone. And I'm gonna use burst mode to show you how you can capture that perfect moment mid action. All right, so. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, how are you going? Yeah, not too bad bro. Um, what's your name by the way? Uh, Jack. Okay, cool. Yeah. You have Instagram or anything? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, well, I'll get that off you in a sec. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I just want to, you know, take a few shots of you jumping that thing um, yeah, right. on your board. Um, so, I'll just sort of set up over here. Okay. And if you can sort of do your thing and, yeah, yeah I'll just take some photos. Cool. So I just took those photos on burst mode and what it did was it took probably about 20 photos as he went by and did that little jump. So I'm just going to take a look in the gallery here and you'll see 
that there are, oh, here we go. So 44 photos for that jump. But if I open that up, it's chosen what it thinks is the best one, but I can actually scroll through those photos and pick one that I think captures the ultimate moto moment. Like this one here, this one here is pretty good. So I would actually go with that one. Now for me to actually capture this moment by just pressing the shutter once at that exact precise moment, well, you can do it, but you don't need to. You can just uh, put it on burst mode and you'll actually be able to capture the perfect moment no matter what. You don't actually have to just get that precise moment. So it's a really handy thing to know that you can do. So I'm actually back home now. I had to come back early, but there's still one thing that I wanted to mention and that is about zooming. When you're using your mobile phone to take photos, whatever you do, don't zoom. Do not zoom. Why? Because actually the camera isn't doing anything except selecting a smaller part of the photo and making that the whole thing. So what you end up with is a reduction in image quality because it's essentially just cropping the full-sized image. It's using a smaller part of the sensor. That is, you actually have the same size photo but you're using less megapixels of the sensor to create that photo. So if you want to take a photo of something, say I want to take these flowers here, I want to photograph these flowers, there's two ways that I could get closer. I can zoom or I can actually just literally get closer. So the lesson here is zoom with your feet, not with your fingers. So let me just show you the difference in the quality of two photos, one of them zoomed in using the camera zoom and one of them zoomed by just getting closer to the subject. All right, so first up, I'm going to take a picture of maybe just this white flower here is my subject. I might get a few of the other ones in the photo, but this is the one I'm really interested in getting in the photo. So let me firstly, zoom using the phone's zoom. I'm going to zoom right in. There we go. Focus and take the shot. Now I'm going to make the camera close rather than using the optical zoom, sorry, than using the digital zoom in the camera. So get close to So, let's compare these two images. Here is the one that we took getting close. If I pinch it out, you'll see there's still a lot of detail in there. It's looking all right. Now, let's go to the one that we did using the, op the digital zoom. Look at that. Look at the difference in quality there. And you can see also that it affects the depth of field because when you get closer to the subject, your depth of field actually becomes shallower. So those out of focus parts in the background become more blurry, which makes your subject stand out even more. So there's more than one reason why it's good to zoom physically, zoom with your feet rather than with your fingers, because not only does it give you better image quality in terms of the megapixels, but it's also going to have a nicer effect in terms of the depth of field. So once again, here's the image taken with the digital zoom that is pinching out on your camera, and here's the one that's taken by just getting closer. So there you have the basics of mobile photography, but we've only just scratched the surface of how you can use your phone to take amazing photos. So I'm gonna keep uploading videos here relating to different aspects of mobile photography, uh, perhaps some apps that you can use to edit your photos in phone with really amazing results, uh, camera apps that give you more control, more creative control over how your pictures end up. Uh, also some composition techniques, using the light, ways to create creative images as well. All of that is in upcoming videos that I've got planned. So be sure to subscribe and like this video if you did get something out of it. 
Also, if you're in Brisbane, you can always join one of our workshops and learn face-to-face -face by uh, checking out the BNE Lens website where you can book mobile photography workshops, you can book photography workshops with your DSLR or even with a point and shoot. Whatever it is you've got and whatever it is you want to learn, we can tailor make a package to suit what you want to get out of it. So it'd be great to see you at one of those as well. Apart from that, I've got nothing more to say, so I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.